Good morning and welcome to our reflection for this 14th week of Ordinary Time, the week that we celebrated the 4th of July. I hope everybody had a safe and a joyful 4th. Let us start this morning in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh God, who in the basement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy for those you have rescued from slavery to sin you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel this morning is from the Tuesday morning Mass. It's Matthew 9, 32 through 38. As they were going out, a demonic who could not speak was brought to him and when the demon was driven out, the mute person spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Matthew's Gospel from Tuesday reminds us that there are two kingdoms waging battle all around us. A false kingdom led by the evil one that hopelessly attempts to encroach on God's kingdom. And then the one real kingdom, God's. Jesus gives us a glimpse of his power over the dark kingdom as he drives out the demon in today's reading. Today, after Jesus cures a demonic who could not speak, the crowds were amazed. But not simply over this casting out. You might say this was the exclamation point at the end of a sentence. Today's reading is the climax of many miraculous deeds that we see in the previous verses of Matthew. Jesus has cured the sick, healed a leper, gave sight to the blind, and raise the dead, among other things. It took the people witnessing 10 of Jesus' miraculous deeds, his miracles, for the crowd to proclaim nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. Even the Pharisees acknowledged the spiritual forces at work in the world, the good and the bad. They were closer to faith than those whose vision remained focused only on the material world. But through their nearsightedness, they came to the wrong conclusion. Do you ever wonder why Jesus doesn't stand up for his reputation or fight back against the Pharisees? I mean, they accuse him of working with the devil, and he seems to do nothing. What does he do? Jesus moves on to other towns and villages as he continues to teach and proclaim the gospel of the kingdom and to cure every disease and illness. Jesus maintains the ability to connect with those who were troubled and abandoned rather than being angry at those questioning him or indifferent to the suffering of those less fortunate. Jesus maintained compassion towards others. What a great example is this for us during our, divide, our divisive world that is all around us today. Jesus modeled for us how to go forth to help those who are suffering and to do so without anger or resentment, but with compassion. He acknowledges his need to help and he also asks us that he wants us to help him with that harvest. This week's challenge, ask yourself, 
How can I model Jesus in my everyday life? How can I help with the harvest? Let us pray. Jesus, we ask today that we may continue to hear, to see, and to witness you in our everyday lives. That we may heed your call to be a laborer and to spread your message through our daily interactions with others, especially those who are troubled and feel abandoned, and to do so as you have taught us with compassion. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us.